Hi, Simple Life. This is Ricky, Krista's husband. I've received a lot of emails about showing off our solar panel system. So I'm going to show you guys today in a video um, exactly what we have and what it does. So I thought we would start out by having the panels down at the height of the day and show you what our ARC-50, which is made by Magnum, is outputting. So right now we're, we've got about 1,046 watts without the panels being inverted. It is 58 degrees outside in Grand Junction, Colorado, 73 inside, and it's approximately 245. So this is our array. It's 12 100 watt panels. They're all in the down position. We're going to raise them up really quick and then go look at the ARC-50. Just a close-up view of how I made my framework. I used 2-inch extruded aluminum from Florida, which we use to make screened enclosures, and I encapsulated the panels with the framework. I then ran these 2-inch extruded aluminum directly to the framework of our RV so that I could hinge them. I'm going to have my son recording the video so that he can show you how we hinge our panels up to get optimum performance. So we have to latch all of our panels down, otherwise they would fly off when we go to drive. So I have three latches per panel. and they all hinge straight up. I use all stainless screws and all aluminum so it doesn't corrode. Eventually I'm going to put hydraulics that will lift the panels up for me with the push of a button. But it only takes about five minutes to put them up. So this little panel here is only a 10 watt panel, but it's going to be very important for the video later. This is attached to our panels that we're inverting. So this is our panels inverted. 12 panels at 100 watts each, plus our one little 10 watt panel up there. So now we're back inside, and we're going to look at the ARC-50, and it is 2.56, so we were outside about 12 minutes doing the panels. We have increased our wattage, we're now seeing 1100 range. It's still kind of partly cloudy outside, so We'll probably get 1,200 here in a second. Now we're to the point where the combiner box comes into our RV. We've decided to put it in the back. So this is our kill switch from our panels. If I turn that switch, it will cut off all the power coming in from the panels to the Magnum PT100. This is a 100 amp charge controller. And it basically takes the signal from the panels, it converts it into a voltage signal that runs to the battery bank through that other red kill switch, through a 100 amp fuse, and into the battery bank, which I will show you in a second. Um, the black box up here, next to that 100 amp fuse that says Magnum, is the battery bank monitor. I would recommend going with Magnum because they have a modular system that all remotely connects to one another. So I have a Magnum PowerTrack PT100, a Magnum battery bank monitor, and a Magnum inverter charger. 
These all get hooked together using a remote network wire that allows me to look at everything from the inside of my RV with my ARC-50, also made by Magnum. So I've decided to put my battery bank right next to my charge controller, my inverter, everything. I've used a wall to separate them so that I don't get any gasification in the electrical room. So what I've done is I've used Trojan T105 REs. They contain about seven to eight more pounds of lead, which gives you not only more weight, but also more charge cycles. Um, I'm running a 24 volt system, which is why I have eight of these batteries. And the little doomahickey you see right there is actually a DC fan. If you remember from earlier, the little 10 watt panel runs down the same wire and connects to this DC fan. What it's doing is it's actually sucking air in through that hole on the side and pumping it out of the box. So I have a positive ventilation in my battery bank room when they're charging, helping to keep it from gasifying and causing an explosion. You're probably asking, how does a RV compartment hold this much weight? It's just a plastic compartment to the naked eye. But, in actuality, I have these 18 gauge steel straps that run along the bottom, all the way over, and up to the other side. On top of those straps I have a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood, and this foam playground mat material. It helps to absorb the shock when going over bumps, keeps everything staying steel and insulates as well. You want to keep your batteries insulated. If they get below a certain temperature, it's really hard for them to charge. Same thing with getting too high of temperature. Your Magnum controller will shut the power off going to them if they exceed uh, a maximum temperature using these battery bank monitoring jacks. Last time I tried to see if I could get the numbers to show up on the power track. We're going to try it again now that we got better lighting. So when I come down here to the select button, I can select and it shows me that it's pushing 34.8 amps, 69.1 volts, 1.04 kilowatts at 30 volts. Hopefully this shows up. Sometimes the, the green numbers don't show up on the video. But again, it's partly cloudy outside, so we're hit and miss with full sun. Maybe one day I will pull the readings again when we have full sun and no clouds in the sky. It's the end of the day now, and our battery state of charge is at 100%. It's nighttime, we just got home, so let's check and see our different meters. So the ARC-50 remotely connects to your AGS meters, which is your automatic generator starter, your BMK, or your battery bank monitor. I'm not sure what ACLD is. The PT is your charge controller. Um, so we could hit that, PT status, press select, it's sleeping because it's nighttime, nothing's really happening, so it shuts off, saving electricity, um, there's no power out, let's see here, let's go to DC meters, so now that my batteries are charged, and it's at 100%, it is reading 26.2 volts. I'm guessing that that's probably gonna be the highest voltage that I have fully charged. 